you join me today at the wheel of one of the most under the radar performance cars on the market and this is in one of its rarest guises it's a mark 6 golf r Oh, and this car is currently for sale at Percival Motor Company, so if you're interested in this, then do head over to the website where the link is in the description. Hello, welcome to Furious Driving, and as you know, we like something a little bit different and unusual on this channel when it comes to our cars. Now, you might be thinking, a Mark VI Golf, that's really not that unusual. In this case, though, it is, because it's a Mark VI Golf R, and apparently they only made 800 of these, now the R badge in Volkswagen Nomenlecture goes back to about 2002 on the R32 when they stuck it on the V6 and of course there's the R39 Passat, the R50 Touareg but it was always combined with a number and it was an extra special something of something. It wasn't until this car came out that the R became a model or a trim level in its own right and it was the top of the tree sitting above the GTI. This is the big one, the discreet secret performance car, the ultimate Q car. If you wanted mega performance four-wheel drive but discreet looks you went for the R. Now I left the bonnet and what you're faced with is a big sheet of plastic hiding something little bit special a four-cylinder object of desire it may not have the visual or audible punch of the V6 that went into the R32 but it does have a lot of actual real-world advantages it revs faster it's more powerful, it's lighter. Everything about this engine is actually better than the VR6. So this engine is the EA113 TSI four-cylinder turbo, which makes 267 horsepower and 258 foot-pound of torque, which is plenty when you stick it in a three or five door mid-size hatch, and especially if you whack it on four-wheel drive as well. And this entire car, particularly thanks to the smaller, lighter engine, is actually a lot lighter than the old R32. 1,450 kilos to be exact, but that means with this extra power and extra lightness, it'll do naught to 60 in about five and a half seconds. And that's regardless of whether you have the DSG if you're feeling lazy, or the manual if you wanna have a bit of fun with the car. Now the R was available as a three or a five door. In this case, it's a three. The five is a little more practical, but the three looks so much better as basically a very, very practical coupe. And you'll notice the color of this car is quite distinctive. This is a VW color called graphite blue, and it was available on the R from the color shots. However, the person who chose this car from brand new decided white would be more exciting. They were wrong. So the second or third owner took it back to VW and had it painted by Volkswagen back in an original factory color. You might've spotted a couple of white White bits under the bonnet there's nothing untoward going on it's basically just someone thought it would look way better in this really kind of cool understated metallic blue which does look really really good i'm amazed pretty much no one else on the planet thought that would look good in that color because it looks amazing now, as I said at the beginning, this is incredibly understated. If you want a Q car that flies under the radar but can absolutely fly, the Golf R is really for you. There's a few little styling cues that give it away. Around the front, we've got these big streaks of air vents underneath the running lights that give it a bit of a visual clue there's something going on under the bonnet. We've got the lower air down with a little bit more sculpting. We've got these very subtle side skirts, which just make it look a little bit more yeah, muscular and grr. And the wheels, the 235 19 tires are big chunky bits of rubber to help you keep on the road but these three fingered five spoke alloys do look so meaty and fill the arches really well so the whole thing is very subtle it's got a little bit of aggression but not in your face i've had to wear a baseball cap just to add a bit more attitude to this whole car today here at the back the theme of subtle under the radar performance continues we've just got a little tiny badge with the r on it nothing else not even the word golf anywhere and okay we have got these massive twin tailpipes but nothing else to give the game away now inside we have got all the usual golf extreme practicality coupled with a little bit more flair in the interior first of all the door cards very subtle but very elegant obviously very well made you've got this real golf solidity going on there's an engine turned metal insert to add some visual interest at the top of the door a nice metal door handle and all these okay Volkswagen parts group bin parts but they all work electric mirrors heated mirrors electric front windows of course the rear ones are fixed being the three door and you have a nice padded area in the door and then the door pocket itself it's so practical it's unbelievable huge front opening so you can put a great big bottle of drink in here and the whole thing is flock or felt lined carpet line almost so you don't have a rattling annoyance in the door when you're driving 
very well thought out indeed. We do have the nice Golf R sill tread plates so that everyone knows they're driving a Golf R if they're getting into the car, but at no other time. Then climbing in, look at the R embroidered seats. Again, there's not much of a giveaway, just a little bit of headrest embroidery. Then this lovely texture in the center of the seat. It's a bit like in the wall decor in the Men in Black offices. A very 1960s pattern turned into a fabric and surrounded by bits of, I believe this is Alcantara and then something more hard wearing. So the seats don't really show much wear. Now, now climbing into these seats are oh, very comfy. You sink into the fabric and the, the uh, foamy stuff ah, and relax. And you're held in so tight, you almost don't need the seat belt. You're so well clamped into the seat by these bolsters. But then look in front of us and we have got a very sporty steering wheel. The flat bottom, the perforated leather. And look at all this shaping. This is very Halford slash Momo uh, sports design. You know it's sporty when you've got this much sculpting going on on your steering wheel. It does feel very nice, chunky, lovely, good quality feeling leather. And a few buttons as well. We've got phone controls, we've got uh, menu controls on this side. And of course, we've got the horn for the horn test. Wow, that's an aggressively awake horn. It's a very positive horn. It knows where it's going. Now here in the footwell, I do love these aluminium and rubber interesting um, sporty pedals which are a bit like Halford's rip speed all the aftermarket things fortunately I do know how time works so I know they were copying this not the other way around then we have the dials let's have a look at the dials check this instrument sweep with the blue needles that is so cool big rev counter big speedo so it's all very much performance focused red lining six and a half thousand rpm speed up to 200 miles an hour which is only partially optimistic. And I like the little sub dials for temperature and the fuel, which are situated inside the main dials. You don't often see that being done. And the center of course, you've got a nice LCD area to tell you many, many things. Looking above that, we have a large tea shelf. We can put many snacks upon this top level deck and enjoy them at our leisure, but only when the car is stationary because we will be pulling some G's in the corners. Down to the right hand side, we've got big useful event with a little bit of aluminium surround more of this engine turn metal uh, across the dashboard and the uh, fairly standard issue Volkswagen light switches and dimmer switches which you'll find in many Volkswagens likewise the stalks for whoops wipers and the indicators you'll find these in many other Volkswagens but they're they're solid performance so no problem there in the center we have got more big vents and we've got this size smaller this is interesting to reflect back in 2011 this was quite a big screen. It's a double din thing, so bigger screens were available, but it was very much a much cost option. It wasn't until the later version came out in 2013, 14, that the Mark 7 got a full screen that I remember. And above that, we've got our dual zone climate, which is very good indeed. This car's had a Parrot Bluetooth thing fitted. This one has got a few extras though. It's got a, a USB input and an audio input in this big cubby down here, which is also the top of the ashtray and the 12 volt socket there. We can turn traction control off, so smoky burnouts are a thing. Now this is the good bit. This is manual six-speed gearbox. It's nice and springy and snickety. So good fun for the back roads. Over to the left, we've got more of this engine turn look metal with another tiny, tiny subtle badge. There's just nothing shouting about this car's performance potential at all. It's so, so under the radar. Now moving back, we have got two cup holders and uh, in true VW group form, they are not the same. The one at the back is deeper, the one at the front is shallower, obviously, but we do have this quite fun little option of a bottle opener here in the center, dividing the two, which can also be clipped down here, if I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you can. So there you go. Don't drink and drive, kids. That's also a clicky slider, so <laughs> I'm amused by this. Now we have yet another AUX input down here for audio input. And here in the armrest, there's not much in the way of storage. A little bit just big enough for a couple of keys and credit cards. I don't know what, maybe a phone would just about fit in there. And this one has got a media input, so it's now got a lightning connector added to it. So we are pretty well sorted for every kind of media input you could possibly want. Passenger door is very much a mirror of the driver's door, but just fewer controls. This car has got no sunroof, but it does have one of these rather funky fold down sun glasses hiding contraptions very useful let's have a look in the back 
Now I climb into the back of the car, whoops, find my hat, and you'll find some more repeats of the front comfy bucket seats. Quite vertical, good headroom, good knee room, good arm room, good everything room really. It's a big spacious back of the car. It is a little bit enclosed because these side lines do sweep up for an interesting coupe-ish look, but it does mean that your, your shoulder height is very much window ledge height, so you do feel a little bit like you're penned in. How have you got an armrest? A speaker, another carpet lined cubby hole, so lots of stuff to play with, room for activities. Whoops. In the centre, twin air vents, so this is you know, comfy high end car stuff. Hidden in here is not an ashtray as it looks, but in fact, clampy, the claw style cup holders. Interesting. Armrest wise, we're well catered for with an armrest, and that doubles up as oops, a ski hatch into the boot for skis. Now when it comes to the boot, it's an okay size. It's not absolutely massive, but it's by no means small either. We have got a 12 volt socket back here for charging stuff. We've got hooks left and right. We've got elastic things for the first aid kit and the triangle. Generally, all the useful stuff you're likely to want. And underneath the floor, we have got a space saver spare wheel, so you're not gonna be stranded if you have a puncher with one of those stupid inflaty kits. So, well done golf. Right, let's fire this thing up and take it for a drive. Depressed clutch to start, it says. Manuals are doomed by the electric revolution. How do you feel about that? I think it's pretty depressed. So am I. Now, even though it's not a V6, it's only a straight inline four, it does have a lovely burble to it. So, let's get this thing out and see what it can do. Experience some of that. 0 to 65 and a half second power. Wow! It absolutely flies! I used to have a Cupra R for a little while and it was very similar power delivery because that four wheel drive system just plants the power onto the ground immediately. There's no scrabbling of the front wheels while it looks to get the power to the ground. There's no smoky burnout, it just goes. And the torque, 258 foot pound of torque, I believe I said, it just feels like so much, so much pull in the mid range gears. Anyways, this is the ultimate all-rounder. It does literally everything you could want. Okay, to be a little bit careful on roads like this because the 19-inch uh, rooms are, of course, a little vulnerable to these big potholes and things which are absolutely everywhere. But the ride isn't rock-hard, bone-jarring, tooth-filling, loosening levels of hardness. It's actually quite pliant, even though there is incredibly good body control. It gives a nice comfortable ride that you can live with daily, but when you want to throw it around a bend, it's got enough body control to keep it pointing in the right direction and on all four wheels. Now the steering is also comfortably light. It's not so light you have no feedback and you don't know what's going on, but it's the kind of thing you can wend through traffic without getting a tired arm. But again, you've got enough feedback coming back to know what's going on at the front of the car. twin exhaust does have a terrific burble. That is what separates this R from the ordinary everyday cooking variety Golf. This has got a real pizzazz in the way it sounds. You can hear it approaching when you hear it in a car park. You know there's something a little bit special. Red lines at six and a half thousand and you can flip the needle around in no time flat. Oh, 
this thing is just such a great driver's car. Even chucking around a lane that's at 40 miles an hour or so, third gear, little blip of the throttle, and it's just power waiting to go. Keep it in a lower gear and you get that buzzing sound from the engine that is just kind of electric. And the car just clings on through every bend. It's so sure-footed. It's a proper little mountain goat. When I had a DSG encumbered Cooper Estate, because the DSG was the only option on the Cooper Estate, uh, I took it down the Stelvio Pass, and I have to say that did spoil it a lot for me because it was never quite in the right gear. Whereas this being a manual, that same bit of road would be enormous fun, just in control the whole time. Now, in normal driving, this should be getting around 33 miles to the gallon, which is respectable enough for a very high performance car. However, keep on driving like an idiot, and it will fall quite a lot lower than that quite quickly. So, you know, rein in your enthusiasm when you can. It's just so competent. It's just such a good car at everything. It is comfortable. It is fast. And I imagine if you crash it, it's safe, but I won't be testing that today. In this color, it looks absolutely fantastic. Is the problem I would keep it doing that every time I left the line in this car I couldn't own it because I would be 0 to 60 or 0 to 40 0 to 30 even just to feel that rush maybe I should buy an electric car just for that this car is just so competent the wheel the wheel feels really nice in your hand and the controls are all pretty much exactly where you want them to be it's so well it's typically Volkswagen this is quite a rare car because the Mark VI was only on the market for a fairly short time before the Mark VII uh, superseded it. And the Mark VII is the one that people really think of when they think of a Golf R. But this is the genesis of the R. Apparently it was going to be called the R20, but people thought that in focus groups it came up sounding a bit weedy and a bit, a bit meh compared to the R32. It was, uh, as far as the badge was concerned, it was a big step down when in fact it was, it was a big step up from the old R32. Maybe in 2021, that is something we're more used to and can deal with more because we're more used to smaller engine cars being fast but back 10 years ago that was a bit of a, a retrograde step in many people's eyes going from a v6 to a four cylinder how could that be better when in fact it was it was lighter freer revving more powerful with that turbo but yeah i'm told that there were only 800 of these registered now how many of those still exist i don't know probably not that many because they will have been driven enthusiastically, shall we say, and possibly driven enthusiastically into things. Now, if I was on the wrong side of the law and looking for a getaway car, I wouldn't be looking much further than this. So I imagine a few of these may have wound up, again, on the wrong side of a brick wall. So there really can't be many of them left. And this is about the only one in graphite blue. So, if you're after something fast and individual, reliable and different, and yet nondescript enough not to set people's spidey sense tingling that you're actually a bit of a boy racer on the sly, this is the car for you. Well, thank you for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed this ride out in this well, rarest of all the Golf R's really, and in a fantastic colour too. If you're interested in this car, then please do head over to the Percival Motor Company website, where it is for sale at the moment, and join me again next time driving something completely different.